Sports Podcast. Here's your host, Logan Bailey. Welcome to the NW Sports Podcast Football Edition, brought to you by primary sponsor Three Chord. I'm your host, Logan Bailey, and once again, joined by Keith Brown, Tony Fairchild, and AJ Fairchild. So uh, another week is in the books, and uh, we're moving on to the regional finals this week. So Yes, sir. I have to say, too, uh, I was pretty impressed that it, it was snowing once again. So, <laughs> you know, it's getting late in the year, but I uh, had to wear the Hawaiian shirt, though. It's, it's always it's always sunny when we're talking football. So, uh, I don't know. It was uh, it was quite the drastic difference from Wednesday, Thursday to Friday. And then we was up there at game time and you literally just feel the temperature. The wind was up and the feel the temperature drop. And I was like, Phew. Okay, this is more like football weather. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and and uh, my brother and I were on the sidelines for uh, the Antwerp and uh, Gibsonburg game. And, man, I tell you what, it's a good thing I brought my, my warm <laughs> socks and uh, my gloves because that game got pretty cold and <sighs> it was kind of spitting snow, slushy, and yeah, uh, supposed, the supposed temperature dropped. It's supposed to be even colder this weekend. It's like, it's like a high of like 27 <laughs> I saw. Saturday's, so, supposed to be, Saturday's just supposed to be brutal. But uh, I mean, this is this is what kids play for too. Yep. I mean, if if you can play to the 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 time in the year where there's snow on the ground, that's a good thing. So <laughs> that means yep. you you've made it this far in the playoffs and right. uh, something exciting. And not a lot of teams can say that they've done yep. so. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Let's look at how we did last week for the picks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with AJ is still in first with 178 and 45 record. Keith is in second with 177 and 46 record. I'm in third with 169 and 53 record. Tony's in fourth with 168 and 55 record. And last but not least is Bryce with 165 and 58 record. And actually last week, uh, you know who led all of us? It was Tony. So, <laughs> Tony, you want a little spotlight here? Yeah, of, of course. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I picked uh, the only difference. I mean, I picked Van Wert. I just... Uh I don't know. Had a feeling, and that I went with the gut, and you believed Van, in the Cougars. Van Wert pulled it out, man. I just we talked about it a little bit last week. You know, and sometimes it just takes a spark where they get they get through a game, yep. and and uh, but hey, good good for them. Well, uh, I mean, the, the games are honestly uh, winding down, so the time to make a move is definitely now, and uh, AJ <laughs> and Keith are getting pretty competitive with uh, who's going to end up first for the season. So I'll be curious to see who manages to come out on top. Yeah. Let's move on here. Let's uh, let's kick it off. Let's look at some game recaps from last week, and uh, we were able to, to go to a few of these games. So these are from round three, the regional semifinal, and we're going to go ahead and start with NW Sports Game of the Week from round three, and that game was number two seeded Antwerp uh, versus the number six seed Gibsonburg, and that was at Liberty Center, and Antwerp ended up coming away with it with a 35-27 to victory, and uh, I was there. Like I said, this was personally one of the best games I've seen in a while. I mean, it had everything, and uh, two quality quality offenses, uh, two quality defenses. It had stars and, you know, Antwerp's quarterback, Carson Altimus. Uh, Gibson Burke had a star and running back, Connor Smith. And it was back and forth the entire game. And, and just the crowd was into it. It was just an awesome environment. And uh, especially play at a venue like Liberty Center, it was uh, it was awesome to be at. And fr- from the start, uh, I mean, the game was exciting. Gibson Burke won the toss and decided to receive. And uh, those of you who don't know football, there's a sense of, like, I don't know, arrogance, cockiness. If you win the toss and say you want the ball, and it's basically saying to the other team, we're going to take the ball, we're going to go down and score on you. So that was impressive that uh, Gibsonburg decided to receive. But uh, Antwerp, what did they decide to do? They onside to kick the ball right away, and which I was kind of a – I don't know. I was really shocked to see them come out and onside kick it because he gave them such good field position. I think they got the ball about the 40-yard line, and uh, Gibsonburg ended up going three and out, so it ended up paying off for them. So anyhow, uh, a couple key stats uh, from the game. Quarterback Carson Altimus from Antwerp was 21 of 33, 64%, 367 passing yards, two passing touchdowns. He had 10 carries for 55 rushing yards. Running back Reed Leachty, 10 carries, 52 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns. Wide receiver Landon Brewer, five receptions, 121 receiving yards, one receiving touchdown. And linebacker Cyrus Gale, um, I mean, this dude was all over the field. I was watching him, and he was in on every tackle. He led the team with 16 tackles, and he was a key component on the Antwerp defense. Um, So what do you guys have to say about this game? You know, I, 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 I was not there. I didn't go to that game, but I, I watched the film. You know, I watched the, the feed of it. Um, I tell you what, uh, like you said, it's kind of an exciting game. And, you know, coming down to the stretch there and, and uh, like, Connor Smith, dude, he <laughs> Antwerp had the ball and then and then Ultimus got hurt. He comes out and uh, Antwerp drive kind of stalled. And yeah. they get, they punted the ball back to Gibsonburg and I think it was four plays. It was in the end zone. But, boy, he is he shifty. But man, kudos to Ultimus sucked up the 
sucked up the injury and came back out there and let his team down the field. I mean, how, I mean, how much more exciting does he get than that? <laughs> that leadership on the field is, is key. Sometimes yeah. it makes all the world a difference. Yeah. Just like, as, as, as Logan said, uh, he was there. Didn't really catch the live feed because with us being gone every Friday for forever, you have to, you know, spend some time with the wife. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but I watched it a little bit later, but yeah, there was like a, just a fireworks of scoring in that second quarter, right before the half. Gibson scores, Antwerp scores, score, score, score. I don't know how many points there's like about, about six minute period there where there, there must was. have been four touchdowns. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a heck of a game to watch. Um, but yeah, you, you saw Carson Ultimus, Carson Ultimus go out and you, you were just the reaction of the everybody on the sideline and the, his team out there, you kind of thought it was, wow, what just happened? And yeah, just kudos to him to, you know, come back in and uh, after Ginsburg tied it up, March and we're down the field for the game winning drive. Yeah, I mean, so, it looked bad. I mean, they it, kind of yes, holding it, it kind of carrying them off. And, yep. Um, you know, and so he didn't know. Of course, you're not you're not seeing it on the live feed, and um, but you know, it was uh, when he came back out there. Just you know, you were talking about the end of the first half. The, the sec- yeah. end of the second half was kind of the same thing. All right. And, um, you know, they um, Antwerp had a goal line stand, if I remember right, didn't they? Yeah. Right there towards the there, end, there was a couple of goal yeah. line stands from both and sides. Stuffed Gibsonburg didn't allow him to get in. They took over the ball and. You know, it's one of those, like, you know, you're pretty close to the goal line, got to be careful, and they were able to get out and, and move it out to about midfield or, or so, and then they had to punt the ball away. That's after that's when Ultimus got hurt. But, um, man, Gibsonburg wasted no time of putting the ball in the end zone and then going for two and tying the ball game and uh, put the ball back, and, and Ultimus decided to suck it up and come back out there. I mean, what a beast. Way, way to suck that up. But, but yeah, go ahead, Logan. Oh, I was just going to say I wanted to comment on Connor Smith. I want to yeah. say that kid is as advertised yep. because we were questioning going into this game how legit can he yep. be, you know, looking at his stats. You know, he was like top 15 in the nation, rushing yards, touchdowns. I mean, everything in the stat book. And uh, he just – I watched him. And he just runs so low and he keeps driving. <laughs> and he reads his blocks so well. And he, somehow he just always stays on his feet. And there's one play uh, down in the goal line for, for Gibsonburg. He just, like, spun off people. And one of his offensive linemen was helping carry him. And it's just – I don't know. <laughs> what He did whatever he had to to keep moving the ball down the field. And I said, too, for him being 5'8", 175, he's small, but he is mighty and he packs a punch because I watched him play on defense too and he hits hard and <laughs> he finished the game with 31 carries for 287 rushing yards 9.3 yards a carry and three rushing touchdowns so i must say he was legit i also want to comment though on two um i know gibson berg's out of our coverage area but this is still impressive uh to to honor this so for his season he had 370 carries 3433 rushing yards which is 9.28 yards a carry he ranks fourth for most rushing yards in a season in the state of ohio 47 rushing touchdowns, which is six most touchdowns in a season uh, for rushing. And then looking at a career, he had 6,229 rushing yards on 796 carries. That ranks 14th all-time for yardage. Um, you look at two, 98 career rushing touchdowns and 100 total touchdowns. And that, that's something kids don't even touch half of that in a career. Oh, so wow. yeah, very cool. impressive. And even in this season on defense, 170 tackles, 11 tackles for loss, four sacks, one interception, never missed a game in four seasons, which what an iron man, because yeah, football is a tough sport, but for him yeah. to go out there and not miss a single game. And uh, why don't you just throw on this to uh, his uh, stats and everything else? He went 49 and one and finished as a 157 pound state championship uh, last year in division three for Ohio last March. So, Wow. And you said he's 100, 175 now? Yeah. Man, he hit the weight room. <laughs> wow. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what that's I mean. So, uh, what I just wanted to comment on that. I thought that was very interesting, and, and kudos to him because that's one heck of a career. But uh, a couple other notes I had from the game is um, – Antwerp, you kind of mentioned it, Tony, with uh, Gibsonburg stalling out. Antwerp had the ball multiple times in the red zone, too, and they just got it down there. Um, they just couldn't score, and they, they got stopped on multiple occasions. Hmm. But uh, even I saw something, too, that was interesting. Carson Altman's punted out of the shotgun, too, they, and yeah, he had a punt right. that went yes. all the way down to the two-yard yep. line yep. in the early second quarter, which I personally did not know that they did, but, man, I, he, he did a pretty good job at punting <laughs> little, the football. So pooch punt. <laughs> yeah, that was cool to see, and that paid big dividends for Antwerp as well. So, uh yeah, I, I was just very impressed with both sides, and uh, 
You guys have any other comments on Yeah, here? what I was going to say was kind of like we talked about last, which we'll get into a little bit more, like last week we said with Aiden Pratt, hey, just go out there and do play your game. And we wondered, at least I did personally, I think we all did, hey, Gibsonburg threw the ball 20 times all year. I mean, I think that's what it was, right? Yeah, yeah. 20 times. Um, how, how hard is it to stop a team that, has one running back and as we found out it's extremely hard yeah. you know they're, they're the complete opposite of, of throwing the ball we're going to run the ball and hey you stop us that's your job but if, if you, you can't know, you can't stop us then we're just going to keep running so yeah, and you were saying that keith right at the end of the game and you know as what like i said I was watching the feed it, it almost gibsonburg let antwerp score yeah. I mean, the, the last touchdown, the, like. Antwerp had the ball on the two-yard line or yep. something, and they just ran a dive, and Gibsonburg didn't even didn't even defend it, really. They just kind of let him walk in because, like, as you mentioned, if you don't throw the ball, you need a little bit of yep. time, and there was only a minute and a half maybe yep. or something like so. that. Just a little bit over. Um, you know, so you've, you've got to let them score so you get down the field, and then, you know, Gibsonburg, uh, I kind of joked around with AJ, and I won't repeat it here, but, you know, they run a dive. You know, you're like, <laughs> you, you got to get – you got to go 60, you know, 65 yards, whatever wow. it is to score. And you, and you, you're running a dive. And, um, I think they only had one timeout left at that point and, and, uh, they, they called a timeout or they, maybe they ran the next play and then called timeout, but then they get, they ran a ball again and got tackled. Yep. I think that's when they called the timeout and they come out and then they throw the ball and throw that's when he throws the pick. Yep. And, yep. you know, you force them to do something they're not comfortable doing. And, and, um, but you know, when you got to score, you got to go a long ways in a hurry. You, <laughs> You know, unless he breaks breaks one, you yeah. know, unless Connor Smith would break one loose, you're going to struggle getting there. And I think there was an opportunity. It was right before halftime that I think Gibsonburg had the ball. They were driving down the field, and I was like, I was talking to my brother Bryce, and I was like, you think they're going to score, run, move the ball down the yeah. field, and score Absolutely. in a short amount of time? And yep. what do you know, Connor Smith yep. busts off a forty yep. yard run. And I'm like, well, there you go. I mean, yep. they're going to probably go, go down and score, which I think they ended up doing. But I thought the same exact thing <laughs> right yeah. before the half. I was yeah. like, there's no way they're going to go down there. And yeah, he busted that one. I think off the left side and. Hey, in a so game like this, deal. every opportunity counts. At such a you know fight to the end that yep. you've got to make the most of any opportunities. And I want to say too, in this game, I, I tell you what, Carson Altimus throws one of the prettiest footballs <laughs> I've seen out of a quarterback in some time because that first touchdown pass to uh, Landon Brewer. Um, it was right along the sideline, right in front of me. That ball was in stride to Landon Brewer, perfect spiral, tight spiral, and I I just couldn't believe it. I mean, when it was like a throw, like a big time college quarterback would make it, and, and he made that. Um, he had time in the pocket, and he just delivers the ball each and every time. So he he's got a cannon, and we keep just talking yeah. about it yep. every game. So very impressive from uh, Carson Altimus. All right, let's go ahead. Let's move on to the next game here. Uh, Division 5, Region 18, and we're looking at the one seed, Liberty Center, uh, who faced Coldwater, the four seed, and Liberty Center ended up winning that game 34 to nothing, and that was at Lima Spartan Stadium. And this game was total dominance from Liberty Center from the get-go, and uh, there were no ands, ifs, or buts, and they won in every phase of this game. And I just want to say that Liberty Center football team has everything there to, I truly believe, to win a state title. And their offensive and defensive linemen are some physical, tough, nasty, no good son of a guns, and, <laughs> and they they showed it uh, or Friday night. So um, I just absolutely loved what I saw in the trenches out of Liberty Center. I mean, you might as well have had 100 <laughs> bottles of syrup on the sideline for all the pancakes that were made. And I kid you not, the offensive and defensive lines were absolutely mauling the cold water linemen. And uh, I just wanted to give a shout-out, too, to the O-line and D-line. And uh, those guys were on the offensive line, Owen Box, Landon Bockelman, Seth Navarre, Tanner Klein, and Tyler Lay. And then on the D-line, Owen Box, Landon Bockelman, Seth Navarre, and Zane Zider. So, uh, heck of a performance from you guys. But uh, looking at some stats from the game, Liberty Center finished uh, with a 304 rushing yards as a team. They were led by running back Matthew Orr, who had 21 carries, 101 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns. Running back Colton Cruz uh, contributed 18 carries, 102 rushing yards. And then quarterback Zane Zider, 12 carries, 69 rushing yards, and one rushing touchdown. So uh, what are your thoughts from this game? And this is a game that we were all able to attend. So, One of the things, you know, being stats and stuff like that, like you are usually, uh, we were looking at the time of possession in that game, talk, talking about total domination by Liberty Center. It was, what, 36 minutes that Liberty Center had the ball? Yeah, to 12. Uh, to 12. So, like, the time of possession was just drastically uh, unbalanced, which just shows how much Liberty Center was controlling the ball. They could do whatever they wanted with it. Uh, and talking about the O-line and the defensive line, there was a pick six that was uh, – Oh, was that a third quarter? Somewhere around fourth, quarter. fourth quarter. Fourth, fourth quarter. Fourth quarter. Late pick in the six. game, yeah. Uh, and, you know, that goes in the stats book as like a big play for the defensive backs. But really, that play was 100% developed 
because of people like Owen Box and Landon Bachman, they had pressure on that quarterback so bad, he kind of just scrambled and just chucked the ball, trying to get rid of it, right. set up the pick six perfectly. Uh, and that was that was a play that Owen Box was being triple teamed and was still in the backfield for. <laughs> uh, so it's just it's awesome to see what some of these defensive uh, linemen are doing. And then after the then after the after the pick, I think he knocked all three of those guys down. Yeah, again. yeah he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hopped right back up and hit the quarterback. Yeah. 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 And yeah. you mentioned too with the the line play, defensive lineman. I think Lane Bachelman was he started the game off with the sack on yeah. blazing game from yeah, Coldwater. Right. So play. I mean, what a way yep. to start the game on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, yeah. you're you're putting them behind the sticks to start, yep. and uh, that's not a good place to be if you're on the the opposing team. Yeah, that's uh man, that just. <laughs> From the from the word go, Coldwater just smacked them in the mouth and never let up. And or Liberty um, Center, yeah, Liberty, Liberty Center. Center, sorry, but yeah, they they just come out and smacked them in the mouth. And I was like, I remember we looked at each other after that very first play, like, wow, yeah. that was uh, that was it happened so quick. I mean, they just came right through their bang, and um, you know, and that that quarterback with the broken leg um, playing with the screws and a plate in his leg. Probably not as mobile as he should be, right? Or could have been, yep. but he wasn't doing much scrambling. And no. <laughs> those guys were putting way too much pressure on him. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think he really had a chance to run. Yeah, his, his I, 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 at least we didn't notice it. Um, well, I talked to AJ throughout, but we didn't really notice him limping much. I guess until late, yeah. right? But I guess unless you knew what he what he had happened, you you didn't really have any idea as far as he didn't show it. But right. when when we saw the time of possession uh, after the game, and honestly, when we when we saw that Coldwater had the uh, ball for twelve minutes, where we're kind of surprised they had it that much. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're like, wait, they actually had it for twelve minutes. We were honestly thinking it was ten or under. It was just complete domination by by Liberty Center from yeah, as Tony said, from the word go. I think the only thing that went wrong was they bobbled the opening kickoff. Liberty <laughs> Center did. Yeah, I mean, honestly, is. Yeah. Um, they had a couple of fourth down plays. I think they didn't convert there in the for the first quarter, early second. Second quarter, but, probably. But outside of that, I mean, you couldn't ask for a more dominant performance against a quality program. Yeah. In, in cold water, I mean, you you look at their their resume and it's you know it's like a <laughs> novel. And right. Liberty Center just, I mean, crowd was just there. You know, half hour before the gates opened, I think, you know, we were probably a hundred deep and we got there at five thirty. It yeah. was just, the support was amazing. Yep. And, and I was looking at cold water too. I kind of broke down some stats from 2012. I believe they have, uh, what was it? I think they had five state championships since then, but they also had, they've only been shut out seven times since 2010 and Liberty center is one of those. And they've only been shut out two times, uh, in the playoffs and the other team was Marion local and now it's Liberty center, but wow. I mean, that, that goes to show how dominant their defense has been. And like, again, I know there is a little bit of an asterisk because Coldwater's quarterback had a broken leg and eight screws, yeah. but still, <laughs> it's a good Coldwater team, and uh, they're not just going to go down and bow to no one. So uh, that still yeah. goes a lot to say how well Liberty Center Liberty Center uh, ended up doing. I mean, so. Liberty Center, they only gave up two first downs, and both of those were, in my opinion, cheap first downs on a, late in the second quarter when yeah. they were in a prevent defense just to keep cold water out of the end zone at the end of the second quarter. So, you know, that was the only two first downs they got in the, the second half. I mean, I mean, we were standing there like, holy smokes, it, it, the, three and out, three and out, three and out. Three, I, mean, I mean, it was just it. As, as Logan has in his notes, I want to steal his, his thunder, but that, <clears throat> that, that hit by Trenton Cruz. Oh, yeah. Uh, when the impressive. receiver come across the middle. And then as, as the game went on, you know, Liberty Center pretty much dominated. Then you started focusing on individual players. Well, there was a couple of plays. One we saw, I think me and AJ both said at the same time, we were watching Owen Box. Pressured the quarterback. It was a little screen behind Box. He turns, runs, and chases down the receiver. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was, yeah. It was like defensive his, lineman chased down yes, the receiver. His yeah. motor was like 110%. That kid was all over the yep. field Friday night. You know, and that's one of those things you don't really coach. You know, you can't no, you no, can't coach that. All. It's it's like it's just yep. it's heart and determination yep. and, and just desire to, to, to go get it, yep. you know. And um, you know, he very easily, you know, a lot of linemen would just look and like, oh, I caught the ball and 
I'll jog after them, but you know, you don't really teach that. So and that's something too. Like that's why I was so impressed on the offensive line. Obviously I was a former offensive lineman and uh, I really take pride in that stuff. But what they did is their, their combo blocks were a plus plus, you know, they were double teaming and the second guy was able to get up to the second level to the linebacker and, and seal off those blocks to create big holes for Orr and Cruz to, to run through. But also too, is blocking to the whistles blown because they would block guys. I kid you not five to 10 yards downfield <laughs> and they would, they would literally not stop until that whistle was blown. And, and they were just playing nasty football up front. And that's what you need out of your linemen. Right. And, and they, all those guys did an excellent, excellent job. And I tell I, you, they, uh, you know, somebody was asking me that how does, how does Liberty center do that? Somebody was asking me this today at work. How does, how does Liberty center do that? I mean, it was, I'm like, you know, honestly, they looked like a college team blocking. Cause like you said, Logan, they were, they were just kind of bump blocking, you know, helping out, oh. bumping and going right next level. And sometimes they got to the third level. I saw one time, one of the yeah, guys yeah. was blocking the safety. Um, yep. but you know, you just, that's a, again, it, it's, it's a, that that's coached, but again, it's desire to just keep, like yeah. you said, keep blocking until the whistle. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to go down and block the safety, but the, here's this guy down there pushing his yep. safety on the ground. Yeah. Um, just the offensive line was super impressive, and that you know their their running backs, uh, Orr and Cruz, and you know Zider ran the ball well. Yep. Just um, you know they're 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 the real deal. I've been talking about it. You know we've been <laughs> AJ mentioned it. You know it was like uh, hey this this team just that good. Well they. Proved it to me that you know, like you said, Logan, they're they're they have a legit shot here. They they just made it look like a regular season game against a sub five hundred team. Honestly, yeah. I mean, it was just total domination from yeah the opening whistle to the final gun. Yeah, we were talking about how comparable Coldwater would be to Liberty Center's in terms of physicality, but it did not even look like that. Not even oh, close. No. Liberty Center's physicality was just light years ahead of Coldwater. Complete domination. I mean, not the. It, we, we talked about this before we came on the air, but, you know, with Tenora played Liberty Center, that was the last time we saw Liberty Center. It was the very, very yeah. first game of the season. Liberty Center has gotten a lot better, in my opinion, way better. But not only that, but, you know, Tenora had, I think, Keith, you said seven first downs against Liberty yeah. Center. Yeah. And, yep. you know, just <laughs> I, I'm about 99% sure if we played them again, that wouldn't be the case because Liberty no, Center, not at all. I mean, they look tough. And kudos to that coaching staff for those getting those kids in that, you yep. know, they're, they're good. Yep. One last thing I wanted to comment on, too, is we kind of talked, Tony and I, um, Aiden Hammontree, uh, the tight end for Liberty mm-hmm. Center. He's a good-looking kid. I yeah. mean, I know he only had one reception for 16 yards, but uh, I'm surprised they don't utilize him a little bit more. You know, a big kid. He's probably, what, six, maybe 6'3 six, three six, or so? 6'3", three, 6'4", six, three, six, And he's probably. a big target for Zyder back there, and um, I believe they almost hit him a, a second time, too. Uh, was that in the end zone on a play-action pass? I don't remember if that was him or not. But I don't remember. I know they threw it to him and overthrew him. Yeah, but anyways, uh, he's definitely a nice-looking tight end, and I'm looking for, for them to really start utilizing him down the stretch. Yeah. Uh, I mean, eventually you're going to get some teams that are pretty tough, and you got to pass <laughs> the ball. So yeah. uh, look for him to be a big threat coming up soon. And one, one final thought also, Logan, thanks to all the Liberty Center people that oh, yeah, that, yeah. that came up yeah. to us throughout uh, <laughs> throughout the I mean, pregame and whatnot. But, I mean, thank you guys over yeah, at Liberty that, Center yeah, for absolutely. acknowledging all, and we appreciate I everything. Mean, the, fan, the fans yes. and community were yep. amazing. And like like you guys were saying, we didn't even have anything marked NWO Sports on. Was, and people just <laughs> would come up to us or say how thankful they were and awesome. Yep. So that was really cool. And that then was. I also ran into uh, Coach Colton Wagner from yep. uh, Holgate, too, which he's an awesome guy. So got to catch up with him. So, yeah, thanks again for, for all the support. We yeah, appreciate it. Was, it's nice hearing from him. Yep, so. Absolutely. It was, it, was, it was wonderful to hear. <laughs> Another thing I got to say is kind of more towards all the games this weekend. I know that we saw quite a few different schools at the Liberty Center game. There's uh, a couple of people in front of us from Tenora. There's a couple of people from Holgate, yeah. yep. things like that. It's awesome to see yep. other schools coming together to support those that are still playing. I know the Antwerp game, you said there was Fairview and all of Edgerton, I think you said. There's yeah, a whole yeah. bunch of teams it, there to support them. It was actually really cool because Liberty Center, I believe it was their football team, they were up in the, the stands and they had like their own student section. They actually went down and joined the Antwerp student section and helped cheer on awesome. the Archers, which yeah. was just really cool today. <laughs> like the, the whole Liberty Center football team, they marched down there and uh, joined Damn. the student section. And then it's like their, their student section amplified by like four times. So that was something cool to see at that well, game. And, and and that's that's really awesome of Liberty Center to go over there after they play their game Friday night and go over there and cheer on Antwerp to help them get there. I mean, I know they're in opposite divisions, so they're never going to meet, but still, that that's that's an awesome thing to see. Let's move on to the next game here. Looking at Division Four, Region Fourteen, and this one was a close one. It was the number six seed Van Wert uh, facing off against the two seed West Holmes, and Van Wert won forty to thirty five. And 
Well, Tony, I think you said it best and, and going into this game, and you said let Aiden Pratt do Aiden Pratt things, and uh, he surely did. And quarterback Aiden Pratt for Van Wert was 30 of 39, 77% completion percentage, 282 passing yards, one passing touchdown. Uh, he had one interception thrown, but he had 26 carries for 109 rushing yards and five rushing touchdowns. And another good performance was from wide receiver from Van Wert, Nate Phillips. He had nine receptions, 129 receiving yards, and one receiving touchdown. So, um, I know this one, this game came down to the wire, but uh, what are your thoughts on this one here? Just, uh, I mean, that to me it was they did exactly what I talked about last week. Just let Aiden Pratt go out there and play the game, and um, wow, I mean, what a performance in a you know in a regional semifinal game. Holy smokes! Responsible for almost 400 yards of offense. <laughs> yeah, I think I think like, he was responsible for like over 90 percent of the total yards. Wow! I think Van Wert. If I remember, had like uh, four nineteen or four eighteen of total yards, and Pratt had most of that. So. I think I just calculated three ninety one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that's that's awesome. And I was looking here too, and I, I kind of almost forgot about this. Van Wert jumped out to a fourteen yes. nothing lead in the yep. first quarter, and um, you know they kind of matched each other in the second quarter. Van Wert put up thirteen, and uh, West Holmes put up fourteen. Um, and then West Holmes kind of dominated that third quarter, and uh, it, hit, it came down to the wire because Van Wert needed that touchdown and six points in, in the fourth quarter. So, um, yeah, and, and another stat we always look at are the the turnovers. Um, that Van Wert won the turnover battle. They yeah. only had one turnover compared to West Holmes' three. And, again, um, looking at, at third down and fourth down efficiency, and I was really impressed from both sides. Um, you look at – uh, Van Wert, they were 5 of 13, 38%, which isn't bad. Um, and then you look at West Holmes, they were 10 of 14, 71% converting on third down. And that is just a killer. And we talk about that too. It's like yep. you're getting ready to uh, make them a, get them to a fourth down, you know, try, switch sides of the ball, and they just get that third down. And that that's just, uh, that's what keeps your drives alive. So yeah, I was just looking at that myself, Logan. It's like, oh man, that's uh, converting that often. That's like you said, it's, man, it's kind of. A dagger sometimes. Well, then flipping the script with uh, Van Wert having three for three on fourth downs. Right. That's something, <laughs> that's, too. Yeah, <laughs> that absolutely. sucks, too. It just, uh, you know, you get him to fourth down, and then it's like, well, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> yep. Still on the field. Man, that must have, it must have been like a heck of a game because, as Logan said, Van Wert jumped out. Then um, actually midway through the fourth, looks like they fell behind and Pratt rallied uh, in the last five minutes or four minutes, it looks like. Yeah, and he, I mean, he hit Nate Phillips on a 44-yard yep. pass to, to put him up uh, with time running down. Yep. So, I mean, going going into that game or into the fourth quarter, uh, they were actually down 34-35. So, yeah. um, yep. that game was neck and neck the, the entire way. You take out that first quarter, and uh, they were just matching each other the entire way through. But uh, the, the good guys in Van Wert Cougars ended up pulling that one out, and they, they get to play uh, another tough matchup this week against the Glenville team, which we'll talk about that a little later. But uh, – Nonetheless, excellent, excellent job. Uh, Coach Recker and all the guys over there and Van Wert are doing a nice job this year. And this is actually, this will mark their third consecutive regional final appearance. Wow. So uh, a lot impressive. of dominance from Van Wert. Very impressive. Yep. You got a quarterback like Aiden Pratt, you know, that, that can happen. You can have successful seasons in a row. Let's look at the next game here. Uh, looking at Division Six, Region 22, the five seed Columbus Grove. Uh, they've ended up facing the eight seed Colonel Crawford. You know, Colonel Crawford was coming off a big win against uh, last year's reigning champ Kerry, and Columbus Grove won this one in overtime, fourteen to seven. And I said going into this game, if Columbus Grove was going to win, a lot would rely on the play of quarterback Brent Renner from Columbus Grove, and he really stepped up this this past week. And I know his stats don't necessarily jump out at you off the page, but again, he controlled the ball, he controlled the team, um, he just really did an excellent job. And I just want to tell him, I mean, nice, nice job. He was 10 of 23, 96 passing yards. He had one passing touchdown, zero interceptions, which was key because the following week before he threw an interception. And a lot of times, I mean, when you commit turnovers, that that's not good, yeah. especially turnovers for points. But uh, in a game with limited scoring, that 33-yard touchdown pass to Zach Reynolds was absolutely huge in the third quarter. So what are you guys' thoughts on this one here? Um, just looking at some of the post game articles and videos I watched about this, as, as, as AJ said multiple times and last week, special teams look like this game, I mean, wasn't decided by special teams play, but Colonel Crawford's first points came off a block 
punt. They got the ball, I think, first and goal from the three and punched it in for a 7 nothing lead. Then in the middle of the third, a short punt for Colonel Crawford. Colonel Crawford set up a Columbus Grove, I think it was like a 50-yard touchdown drive. So, um, the end, yes, it's not that special teams was the entire turning point of this game, but definitely had a big impact on it. So. I mean, you look at it, it, and the stat breakdown here, there really wasn't all that many yards. Total yards for Columbus Grove was 241 to Colonel Crawford's 151. Um, even rushing yards, which Columbus Grove is known for, and even Colonel Crawford was known for. Uh, Columbus Grove had 119 rushing yards, and that's usually what, uh, like, Barraza averages a week. So, <laughs> And this week he was limited to 16 carries for 46 yards, and that's what we talk about. It gets tough once you start playing these games as the, the season keeps winding down, and, and really it comes down to who makes less mistakes and who can play clean football it, this time of year. Exactly, Logan, because this game was actually won in overtime. It was 7-7 going into overtime, so that entire fourth quarter was tied at 7. So each play, I yeah. mean – had you know could just gonna just gonna say the yeah. same thing Keith. Yeah. when you're playing in a, a ball game is it's kind of like when you're playing baseball well, you know you're in a tie ball game and, and then you know one pitch one yeah. pitch can change a game and it's same thing here one play and it, somebody misses a tackle and you know there yeah. there you go yeah. so um yeah congrats to columbus grove i mean uh like you said logan big pass play down the you know on the to reynolds there and, and getting a getting a touchdown that's in the third to pull him back and back with a tie and then you know, you talk about A.J. Schaefer all the time, and see, it's good to see that he punched the ball in an overtime. Yeah, definitely. And and something, too, like I said, playing clean football, you look at the penalties in this game. Columbus Grove only had four penalties for 25 yards, and Colonel Crawford only had one for five. And that's what you need to do to put yourself yep. and uh, give yourself a chance to win. If you go out there, like I know we kind of mentioned, too, Tenora – was able to beat Highland, but they went out there and <laughs> shot themselves in the foot so many times. Yeah. And, and yep. if you can control the controllables, go ahead and do it because it's just going to give you that more more of a chance to go out and win that playoff game. Yep. So uh, excellent job by Columbus Grove. Coach Schaefer uh, is doing a nice job. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, I mean, all four teams that we cover are still in the playoffs. Yep. So yep. that was exciting to see. Yep. So um, let's go ahead. Well, we're going to take a break to hear from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Record is a family-owned and operated business who offers the highest quality embroidery, screen printing, sign, and promotional items to customers in Northwest Ohio at competitive prices. Locations in Archibald, Napoleon, and Bowling Green. Check them out at threecord.com. That's T-H-R-E-E-C-O-R-D.com. For any of your auto body or collision needs, be sure to check out Bat and Stevens Body Shop. Voted the number one body shop in Northwest Ohio by Crescent News Readers. Give them a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Feel free to look up their Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram pages as well. Jim and his Basketball Academy strives to create an atmosphere to cultivate basketball fundamentals in Northwest Ohio youth athletes, offering one-on-one sessions, group sessions, speed and agility training, and much more. Located in Pettisville, Ohio, call Coach Jesse today at 419-551-8105. Back on the NW Sports Podcast, Logan Bailey here with Keith Brown, Tony, and AJ Fairchild, and we're going to go ahead and look at some uh, regional final round four playoff matchups, and we're going to go ahead and start with Division 5, Region 18, uh, looking at the number one seed, Liberty Center, the 13-0, and facing off against the two seed in the region, Elmwood, their 12-1, and that will be played Friday at Perrysburg Steinecker Stadium. Um... I think this one's going to be a good one, guys. And, uh, I mean, we've got a chance to see both these clubs play. We've got to see a chance to um, actually see Elmwood play in a scrimmage and um, face off in Tenora. And uh, also, we got a chance to see Liberty Center play twice. So I think it's going to be quite the battle. Um, but uh, the way Liberty Center performed last week, I'm, I'm kind of looking for the Tigers to, to take this one. Um, what are you guys' thoughts here? I Somebody else want to start? I mean, <laughs> I don't think it's even be close. I think the only thing that Elmwood really has going for them was that that high tempo offense, and if they could catch Liberty Center off guard for maybe a drive, they might be able to put up some points. But I, it would only be for that drive if they could get pushed. Because once Liberty Center adjusts to it, you know, it's not going to be like when we watched Elmwood versus Tenora, where Tenora's uh, defensive line got worn down. The Liberty Center is not going to have that problem because, like Logan and I were talking, and we were all talking. Liberty Center is rotating their line 
which is not something you see a lot in high school yeah. football. They're constantly subbing in and out their offensive line and defensive line. Yeah, so. Offensive linemen. That's the thing that was yeah. crazy that we all noticed. That they're yeah. subbing offensive linemen in and out. That just yeah. goes to show how much depth they have yeah. on their exactly. team, too. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think Elmwood's going to really be able to do that hurry up quick <clears throat> offense to try to catch them off guard and make them tired because uh, Liberty Center is just going to adapt to it and it'll be shut down pretty quick. So I think I think Liberty Center is just going to roll through this game, no problem. AJ, you brought up a good point. Elmwood did did that uh, high tempo offense there, and that's what in the second half against Sonora and really yeah, just yeah. kind of took control of the game. And um, but I don't I don't think I agree with you. I don't think they're going to be able to do that. And and but for a different reason, Sonora when they did it against Sonora, I think Sonora's showed a little bit of, of inexperience at you know. The coaching level, maybe not calling a timeout at the right time. You know, a little bit of an experience there, and I don't think you're going to catch Coach Moeller in that situation. I think he's going to be ready for that. Obviously, I'm sure they've probably talked to Tenor and looked at their game right. film. Um, you know, and they're going to they're going to find out what they're doing there. Yep. And um, but I, I just think Liberty Center is <laughs> they're tough man. They're, they're like Logan said, this is they're, they're, they've got the complete package, I believe. Yeah, if you got any comments. Yeah, I mean, like like Logan said, uh, we saw both teams play twice. So Elmwood in the scrimmage, and we saw them during the the uh, round round two, opening round round two, round two yeah, round, round two. two. Um, Elmwood, at least to me, has I guess we never saw Coldwater play except last week, but to me, Elmwood seems a little more explosive offensively than what Coldwater was. And they got Wicker at quarterback, got Micah Oliver, got Mason Oliver. Oh, well, she got. Uh, I, I think Elmwood has more uh, weapons Barger, than what Coldwater yes. does on the so offensive side. Offensively, if I'm looking at offenses, like here's my Elmwood offense, here's Liberty Center offense. If you're going to have one offense you think that can outscore the other offense, I think Elmwood, at least at the skilled position, probably has better offensive players than Liberty Center. I'm not going by line. I'm just going by your receivers, your backs. Obviously, Cruz and uh, Orr for Liberty Center, very talented. But Mike Oliver is really talented himself. Mason and, Oliver. And Mason and, Oliver. Yeah. Um, so if you're just taking skill positions, for me personally, I would give a slight edge to Elmwood. Um but that's, like I said, that's just me. Now, if we're talking offensive line, defense side of the ball, that's a whole other story, as, as AJ said. So, uh, but Coach uh, Coach Bishop, we saw he can make an adjustment as we saw against Tenora. I mean, just like that. Hey, this isn't working for us. Let's flip the script and let's go with something different. And obviously, it works. So, but it's going to be a heck of a game. I, I mean, like the offense of Elmwood versus the defense of, of Liberty Center, just to, just to see that battle right there and to see what uh, adjustments. Uh, Coach Bishop could make if, if needed on uh, offense. And I like so. I like what you had to say about comparing like the, the skill players. I would say that's a fair statement, and, and that's not to take away from the Liberty Center oh, players no, because no, not at all. Orrin Cruz and Zyder and all those <laughs> oh, guys. Yes. Well, they'll make you pay impressive. and they'll yep. they'll burn yep. you deep. Yep. But uh, I mean, just seeing both of them play, I think uh, Elmwood's a little more multiple in their offense. Yep. Obviously, you know Liberty Center's going to go out there. They're going to run the ball with Cruz or and Zyder, which we saw a lot last week. Yep. Um, Elmwood, they can burn you either way. You know, they have a lot of rushing uh, rushers. Um, you look at um, the Oliver kid. Um, they also had Arnold step yep, up. Yep, He's yeah. played a big yep, role yeah. in running the ball. Yep. Um, so, so we got a couple good running backs. Tadish had a pick six for ninety nine yards. Also, yeah, uh, yeah. Friday night. So, yeah. and then uh, Wickard can can run a little bit too, yep. which we found out against the Tenora yeah. game because <laughs> yes. uh, he's a tall quarterback that, that stands uh, nice yeah. and composed in the pocket. And really thought he was more of a pocket passer, but uh, he'll pick up yeah. a few rushing yards yep. here and there to help help move the sticks. But I think I, I think I'm going to have to agree. Um, I know both teams are good teams. I think Liberty Center is going to handle them just because of the fact too is we keep talking about their physicality and yeah, how difficult that is. Yep. And they to go out there and they. It was like Coldwater didn't know what hit them, and that's impressive because coming from a Coldwater or a program like Coldwater that plays down on the MAC and has all the success, that says a lot. And I, I think Liberty Center is going to go out there, and Elmwood's 
I don't think they've seen an opponent like this all year long, and uh, I think I think it's going to be tough for them. But like you said too, AJ, I think the one thing they have going for them is the the tempo, and we talk about that too. We talked about it during the Tenora game. Is that a lot of college teams utilize that as another weapon? Is is control of tempo? You know, speeding things up, slowing things down, and that can kind of get some defensive coordinators in, into a, a little uh, little bind because yeah. um, I mean they're trying to make play calls, they can't get into a rhythm, and uh, the offense. If if you've got six plays right lined up, boom 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 you just hit all those that's hard to to stop and uh and and put an end to the drive if you're if you're on the defense so but you know like coach over there says i don't think the liberty center's coaching staff is going to be shocked by that i think they're going to be prepared because no. the, yeah, the like, experience there is against just liberty benton unmatched. probably i mean obviously a little they came into that game off archibald into the liberty center game scoring you know 63 points and put up what four or five hundred yards of offense in Liberty Center kind of pulled the rug out from under him like not so fast and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. well yeah I mean to, for me it's it's going to be interesting just to, to see how this whole thing plays out it's yeah. it should be a good battle all right let's move on to the next game here uh, let's look at Division Six Region Twenty Two and we're looking at the five seed Columbus Grove eleven and two they're playing the three seed uh, Columbia thirteen and zero and that will be Saturday at Robert J Bishop Junior Stadium and Clyde. And this one, uh, I think I think Columbus Grove's got the edge in this one. And you look, and I was looking at Drew Pastor's Fantastic 50. Columbus Grove is actually projected to win by 12 points. And you look at strength of schedule. Columbia was ranked 67th out of 106 in Division Six. That's according to Drew Pastor's Fantastic 50. And in terms of strength of schedule for Columbus Grove, they were ranked 6th out of 106 in, in Division Six for strength of schedule. So I think that kind of goes to show, too. Columbus Grove, I know they've got some losses on the year, but they've, they've been battle-tested. They've played some really good teams. Um, obviously, they lost to a Liberty Benton team, uh, which is a Division Five team. They lost to an Allen East team that Allen East is still playing in for a regional final berth as well. Uh, they lost to them 0-7. And other than that, they've won all their games. So, I mean, you take away those two losses, they're the good teams. But then you look, they beat a 8-4 and Pandora Goboa. They beat a 7-5 and Patrick Henry, a 7-5 and Delphus Jefferson. Um, and you look, and they, they just knocked off a good Northwestern team and a Colonel Crawford team that just beat uh, Carey, and who was the remaining Division Six champion. So uh, what do you guys have to say about this one? I, after you talk about that, Logan, I'm looking at my pick for <laughs> – like, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, I – you you mentioned the the, the strength of schedule. I, I guess I I'm a little confused at how they get a strength of schedule that strong when they played a lot of Division Seven teams in their schedule. Um, you know, Lipsick, Crestview, Ada, Pandora, Gilboa, Delphus, Jefferson. They're they're all Division Seven teams. Um, so I guess I'm kind of confused at how they get that kind of strength of schedule when you look at Columbia. You know, they played Division Six, VI, Division Four. Um, division five team, a couple of division five teams, a division three team, um, and was able to get the win. So, um, I don't know, but I, but I did look and I, I got to go with what I, what I've stuck with all year, um, here lately, you know, you're looking at the win records of their opponents, uh, four and seven, oh, and 10. They That's what beat, I was going to mention. They too. did beat Northwestern, which was nine and three, but, and black river was six and five, but then a one and nine, a three, a seven, three and seven, oh, and 10, uh, four and six. And then they, you know, then they beat firelands it's set with seven and four but it took them two overtimes um and that was a division three team but um you know and they've had some good games here in the playoffs but man i might have to go back and uh rethink this one <laughs> i just wanted to say too uh i was doing a little bit of research on columbia um they basically they've uh they're gonna run the ball uh they got a really good stud running back in marcos so i apologize if i mess this out uh sierra Gliano. He was a junior. Uh, he's got 327 carries on the year, 2,491 rushing yards, averaging 7.5 yards a carry, 42 rushing touchdowns, 21 receptions for 225 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. And he's also the second leading receiver on the team as a running back in terms of receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Um, and two, I just want to say, looking at like some of the running backs I know we know that are good, <laughs> Um, in Northwest Ohio, yeah. man, I can't believe like from Gibsonburg and like this kid and the kid from Highland, like yeah. having over 2000 rushing yards, like it's an accomplishment to get <laughs> over a thousand in this right, area. Yeah. But man, these are some talented kids. But I was, I was just going to say that Logan, you 2,491 yards. That's the third running back in three weeks in a row that we've talked about. That's over 2000 yards rushing uh, for the year. Geez. Ow. Yeah. And I just thought that was really impressive. A couple other things. Um, 
Columbia can. They can burn you on the pass. They've got a good quarterback in Carter Kalmanat. Another difficult <laughs> name. Kalmanasks. I don't know. How do Close. You guys That's good enough. Good enough. <laughs> he's a senior. Uh, he's 82 of 137 on the year, 60% completion percentage. He's got nine passing touchdowns and one interception. He's not a threat to run the ball. He's got 14 carries for two rushing yards, so you can eliminate that out of the question. But uh, it's a quarterback that can take care of the ball and not commit any turnovers, which is what you need out of a team. And then they've got a good wide receiver in Vincent Burradi. Uh, who's a senior? He had Thirty-four receptions, five hundred thirty-one receiving yards, four receiving touchdowns. <laughs> Did you pick the three kids with the the, the hardest names? Boy, that, I, I know. <laughs> good, thing, good thing we're not doing this game. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say these are uh, some some challenging names. It's like you really have to break down the the whole name. <laughs> but uh, they they've got some good athletes. But I I like Columbus Grove in this, and I I think I'm gonna have to agree with Drew Pastor. I I think Columbus Grove's been battle tested throughout the year. Um, you know, they're playing really well right now. And I like the way Brent Renner is really playing right now at quarterback because he's been stepping it up week after week. You know, the one week he threw an interception really didn't do all that great, but he continues to step up and get better week after week. And like we say, too, you get this deep, you have to be multiple yep. on offense. You got to be able to, to be able to throw the ball and pass the ball because um, a lot of times uh, if you can't, um, you ended up – they one – part of your game or the other tends to get shut down, especially once you play quality opponents like you do this late in the playoffs. So, Well, we've seen that the last couple of weeks here. Some of those running backs that are, you know, two, 3,000 yard rushers are no longer there. Yeah. You know, those teams have lost. So, yep. yeah, it's, it really shows that you need to have multiple, uh, multiple dimensions on your team. Let's move on to the next game here. Oh, do you have anything? No, I just, I just uh, kind of intrigued me as I was going through the stats there. Let's move on to the next game here. Division 7, Region 26. We're looking at the two seed, 13 and 0, Antwerp. They're facing off against the four seed, Lima Central Catholic, 9 and 4. That'll be Saturday at Donnell Stadium in Finley. And uh, I think in this game, it's going to depend a lot on the health of quarterback uh, from Antwerp, Carson Altimus. He had a sprained ankle, is what it appeared to look like, late in the fourth quarter of last week, which basically totally eliminated the threat for him to run. And I know he can still sling the ball, but that takes away a huge part of Antwerp's offense if he still is not mobile. So uh, thoughts on this one here? Not just, you know, a threat on offense, but also the leadership that's going to be hurting, not not having that motivation out there to, to keep going. So hurts you on multiple aspects. Yeah, we, we saw both of these teams play. Um, LCC, we played them in week three. Week three, that was that Saturday afternoon game. Um, Came away rather shocked, I guess. I mean, Tenora pretty much dominated that game. Um, Two defensive touchdowns, uh, offensive touchdown by Grady. But the the Rams' defense uh, pretty much controlled Liberty, or Lima Central Catholic, uh, on that Saturday afternoon. I mean, they got down in the... Went inside the 25 there in the last couple seconds where uh, Braden Rostai had to pick six there to, and, and scored on that. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, as you guys said, it's, it all depends on Carson Ultimus. I mean, honestly, if he can't, you know, get out of the pocket and run, he's just going to be a strict, strictly a pocket passer. Um, you know, I, I looked at the game from last this past week, and, you know, he only had, what, 50-some yards rushing? It's not like he blew it up this past week. So, um, you know, he threw for 350 yards. Yes. So maybe he can <laughs> right. stand yeah. back yeah. there and just yeah. sling yeah. it. Yeah. You know, he, well, what we saw him do um, that at Sonora, yeah. I mean, he didn't really, I don't think, rush too much during that game. He just stood right. back there because, I guess, for whatever reason, the Rams <laughs> let him do that. <laughs> just stood back there and picked apart uh, Sonora's defense that, that Friday night. So. I mean, I guess my thing, and, and I'm going to be honest, the, the thing that I was surprised with Antwerp there on the last drive, um, you know, Gibsonburg, against Gibsonburg, and sorry I'm going back a little bit, but with Altimus being hurt, they never got any pressure on him. You know, he, he stayed right there. So it gives a, a shout-out to their offensive line as well. And I think that's going to be the kind of, kind of the um, deciding factor. I mean, if, if Altimus goes, I assume he'll go if, he, if he's not broken. Um but he, uh, if they can protect him and keep him from having to run, you know it's different when you want to run versus having to run. And true, um, yeah. Um, nope. If he, if they can keep him protected and not have him scramble around a bunch, I think he's going to be just fine. And he's going to sling the ball and do what he needs to do. And he's going to find Brewer and those guys out there and make make plays. But 
if if LCC can get at them yeah. and make them run and scramble and throw on the run and kind of like we talked about last year at Sonora, made them throw on the run a lot. Then that leads you know can lead to some mistakes and. Yep. If he's also got a bum wheel, right? <laughs> I mean, plus you got to look at the weather too. Friday, yeah. Friday and Saturday night, it's supposed to be close to what, probably I'm going to guess 25 degrees yeah. at kickoff, if, if not, yeah. if not under that. Yeah. And getting your ankle loose is is going to be like for the Antwerp training staff. You're obviously you're wanting to come to the sidelines. Maybe I don't know what you do. Put some heat. Uh, you got. You guys obviously can answer that. Yeah. But keep it warm. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah, like a heating pad or something to, to try and warm it up and keep it loose. But get the salamander out there and put the old foot right. in front of yeah. it. Just don't, just don't catch it on fire, Carson, whatever you do. But yeah. Uh, we saw Elsa's he's quarterback Carson Parker. Yeah. I mean, he's a he's a big, strong kid himself. He's what six three, six four, close to two hundred pounds. So, um, yes, yeah. yeah, it's another. Uh, Another offensive player that racked up yep. some yards and stuff like that yep. coming into the the Tenora game when we watched him and Tenora was able to shut him down. So I yep. don't see a reason why yep. Antwerp can't do it. Yeah, well, that's gonna be another game film. I, yeah. I was I was thinking in my head that's another game film that Antwerp's gonna be looking for. They're gonna be looking for Tenora to say, hey, what'd you guys do here? Yep. Um, but um, but yeah, it just uh, if if they can control him and keep him, you know, we saw what he does on the run. He doesn't throw yep. the ball well on the run. Carson Parker did not throw the ball well on the run, and and um, that's gonna be huge if they can contain him. Make him throw the ball, That's and then and Antwerp can you know get the ball to Reed Leachty. So I mean, right. a second if 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 Ultimus can't you know right. not hundred percent has a Reed back there also. So and, that and helps out quite a bit. Going back to Tony's comment about shutting down Carson Parker, he's he's a majority of their offense, similar yeah. to yeah, what Carson right. Ultimus yep. is yep. for Antwerp. Yep. But uh, I think the linebacker play of Reed Leachty and Cyrus Gale are going to be huge for that game yep. if, if they can continue to keep yep. him in check. Um, you know, really force hit Carson Parker from Lima Central Catholic to throw the ball. Because I think he's more comfortable being put in yep. running situations. I, 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 he can throw the ball, but I think running the ball is more where he's comfortable at. So I think yeah. if, if those two linebackers for Antwerp can really keep him in check, I think that will be huge for the Antwerp defense and, and holding uh, Lima Central Catholic. Yeah. To, uh, Defensive end play, keeping him inside the tackles. Yeah. Done. Yep, that'll be good too. Run. So. Yeah. Let's look at the last game here. Uh, looking at number six seed Van Wert, twelve and one, facing off against the one seed Glenville, twelve and zero. And we were talking, and this game will be Saturday at Tiffin Frost Calnow Stadium. Um, I I couldn't believe doing some research on Glenville. During the regular season, they didn't even play a Division Four team all year long. They played Division One, Two, II, and Three, and they didn't play a, a team in their division until they got to the playoffs. And obviously, they're undefeated for a reason, but. Uh, um, I looked, and, and obviously we cover Van Wert, and a lot of people know about Van Wert, so just e kind of educating people on Glenville. Glenville has been a pipeline for college and NFL talent, and uh, some names that I looked up, uh, you know, Kobe Bryant, he played for Cincinnati, was a top draft pick. He's playing for Seattle right now. Marshawn Lattimore, playing for New Orleans, played at Ohio State. Uh, Frank Clark, he was a big Michigan guy. He went to Can He's at Kansas uh, City Chiefs right now. And then, of course, Ted Ginn Jr., um, Ted Ginn Sr. is actually the head coach for Glenville. Um, he had a great NFL career. You know, Cardell Jones from Ohio State, Troy Smith, who won a Heisman at Ohio State, and many more have all went to Glenville. And currently, um, Glenville has 11 players on their roster that are holding Division I scholarship offers. And mind you, this is a Division Four school. <laughs> I cannot believe that. And I, I looked. Currently, they have linebacker Arvell Reese. He's a senior. He's 6'4", 212 pounds. He's a four-star recruit committed to Ohio State and can run at 4'540". <laughs> they have quarterback Bryce West, who's one of the top recruits out of the 2024 class, so he's a junior. He's 5'11", 170. He's a four-star recruit. He's got offers from Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, and Penn State. Um, and then you look at some other key athletes. They got an athlete in Demarion Witten. He's a junior in the 2024 class, 6'4", 215. Four-star recruits, got multiple D1 offers. And uh, last guy, running back Deshante Jones. He's a junior, 2024 class. He's 5'10", 225 as a running back. He doesn't have any offers yet, but that's a big back for high school. And uh, I, I think the one thing I will say going into this game I think you can have all that talent, but individual attention, I think, can cause some distractions on that team. But. Um, I think for Van Wert's sake, I think they need some individual distractions, and they need a lot of them. So what are your guys' thoughts on this game here? I, I don't think individual distractions is, is bothering these guys at all. When I look at their schedule, I mean, they're blowing teams out of the water. Um, they're scoring, averaging probably 40 points a game. 
Um, went for a stretch there in the middle of the season, 55 nothing, 44 nothing, 40 nothing, 50 nothing, 39 nothing, 54 nothing. Uh, I think I think they're okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seven, seven shutouts on yeah. the year. Wow. And, and like you said, Logan, not even against Division Four teams. This is Division One, Two, and Three that they're shutting out and yeah. beating by forty, fifty points. So like they're just just crushing people. <clears throat> I, the one thing about the the Arvell Reese that is a kid that I would not want to be in front of. No. Oh man, two hundred and twelve <laughs> no. pounds running a four or five. That is going to be like a truck hitting you. Playing at linebacker, yeah. yeah. Oh my. You goodness. know he's got time to come downhill. You know facing off linebackers typically match up against running backs they're the ones filling the hole <laughs> that run those running backs are gonna hurt i'm sorry van wert but be ready for that one <laughs> it's it's almost like van wert needs like the script from liberty center and have one of those time of possession games where, you know yeah, kind of play so keep too. away and you want the time of possession 36 to 12 on your because that's really I, the only chance that they have honestly is just to possess the possess the ball majority of the game on i mean and and come up with a special teams miracle or a defensive score. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be rough. There's no room for error on Van Wert's side. I know we all personally want to see Van yep. Wert win, but Glenville, to have that much talent on your team and being in Division Four, which I don't even understand. They don't even play any Division Four. I'm surprised they don't kind of move up or right. they're not bigger than what they are. Yeah, but com- competitive com- balance. Yeah, I mean, can- when you've got – you know, 11 kids with D1 offers, the, the competitive balance uh, that they always talk about, trying to make things better, um, should come into play when you yeah. play in a team. This, this team should be in Division One, not not Division Four. I feel like Glenville is almost the, the, the bigger school version of Marion Local as far as yeah, being having, right. having <laughs> yeah. talent and stuff. Yeah. So um, I just thought of that as a comparison. But, again, uh, I think it's going to come down. Uh, I think if uh, – Keith or coach head coach Keith Recker, um, I think he's going to need a four leaf clover um, yeah. because this one's going to be a tough battle. Um, I think again, Aiden Pratt has got to play his best game he has all year, and the offensive lineman, you know, led by the lineman of the year in the WBL, Logan Dotson, has got to go out there and hold his blocks along with the rest of the guys and your receivers. You've got to get some yards after catch too. You got to do whatever you can. You got to strain to get whatever yard because football is a game of inches, and you're going to need every single inch in this game. Um, it's going to be a tough one for sure, and uh, it's 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 going to be uh, interesting to see. So. Um, you guys have any other comments on this one here? No, I think we pretty much said it all. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> go Cougars. Yeah, go Cougars. <laughs> We're definitely be rooting you on, but uh, we, we hope for the best. So. Um, and it's definitely going to be a tough battle, but we're pulling for you. So let's go ahead. We're going to take a break to hear from our sponsors, and then we'll hear from our special guest uh, in the call-in section. Fairchild Family Chiropractic aims to help families to get better together in the least invasive way possible. Dr. Fairchild focuses on the neck using the Blair Technique and Palmer Package, adjusting to correct spinal misalignments. Located in Defiance, Ohio, call Dr. Fairchild today at 419-576-5070 to schedule an appointment. Northwest Ohio Basketball hosts premier basketball tournaments for boys in grades 3 to 8 in the area. Upcoming tournaments are right around the corner. Give them a call today at 419 283 Five two nine six, or check out their website at nwobball.com. Crystal Vasquez of Amerimade Realty is a top real estate agent in Northwest Ohio. Crystal's compassion and enthusiasm allow her to find that special property or house just for you. Located in Bryan, Ohio, give her a call today at 419-799-1243. LC Tiger Sports Live is your home for Liberty Center Sports, providing quality coverage that includes live HD video feed and excellent commentary throughout the year. Check out their Facebook page at lctigersportslive.com for more. Optimal Performance Fitness is your go-to gym in Northwest Ohio, providing group fitness classes, personal training, and sports performance sessions for area athletes. Back on the NW Sports Podcast, and we're into our call-in section. And today on the show, we're going to have call-in with Liberty Center football players and offensive and defensive linemen Owen Box and Landon Bockelman. So first off, guys, I want to congratulate you on the big win last week against Coldwater. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's go ahead. We'll go into the first question here. Uh, what was it like to play in that game last week with a huge crowd and with the su- such support from the Liberty Center community? You know, we showed up, and we kind of mentioned it earlier in the podcast, we showed up right at 530, and there was a huge line halfway to the road, it seemed like, and it appeared Liberty Center had double the fans of what Coldwater. I don't know that there was a single person that lived in Liberty Center that was not at the game. So what was that like <laughs> playing in, in a game like that and with such support from your community? It was definitely crazy because the the backs and ends and the special teams leave before us, and we're in there, and we finally go out, and we're like, man, it's kind of it's kind of crazy because we're over in the locker room, 
and you're going to hear the fans, but man, is it, is it really that equal on each side right now? And we get out there and you like, we just looked over the Liberty side and like everybody was there. Like the coaches were telling us that like people were lined up at five thirty, like my, like a mile. And like, even when we pulled <laughs> in, there was like fans already getting there. So it was definitely crazy. And especially down on the field, we, uh, we, there was like plays and like they'd be saying this cadence and we just, I couldn't hear it sometimes. And like, I just had to like wait to see that ball movement to go. Yeah. We actually messed up a play one time about because the crowd was so loud. We couldn't hear anything. So, uh. <laughs> Next question I had for you guys. Uh, I watched both of you play specifically last week, and I must say, uh, coming from another lineman myself, I was very impressed. I mean, you guys were putting pressure on the quarterback on the defensive side, and you guys were pancaking guys on the offensive guy, the offensive side. Um, you guys just really played nasty, and I absolutely loved it. And uh, I feel like both of you have really come into your own this season. Last week, I talked to Coach Moeller and uh, last week about your guys' physicality. How big of an impact has physicality played in the trenches this season for your guys' team? It definitely has uh, affected teams really like badly for them. They just they think the size that they have up front is going to shut us down and like neutralize our play. But, I mean, you can only use your size for so long before you start to get worn down after being hit after hit after hit. I think that's definitely like – we're big, but we're not like oversized. We're like to the point where we can't condition enough. To work. Like we're we're in very good shape, and that's definitely where physicality comes in our conditioning. We just wear teams down, and they just at some point you got to give. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree. Um, I mean, you guys, I and I, I talked touched on it earlier too. Is that you guys would just block to the until the whistle was blown, and that was that was awesome to see. And and Tony kind of said that's something that you don't coach. That's something that's just embedded in in the athlete itself. Yeah. And and you guys both did a, an awesome job on that. Um, next question is yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, our our D line kind of has like a saying. Our D line thing is uh, don't be denied. Uh, just like if, I mean, that's what we've been like preached on. Don't let don't let anybody get in your way because you, that feeling at the end when it doesn't go your way is, is not good. So if you just, if you're just not denied, you don't have to feel that feeling. Yeah, definitely. Um, next question I have for you here is I feel like your, your team plays so well together and you can tell there's just a bond between players, coaches, community, everyone involved with the program. And I imagine this season has been one heck of a ride for you guys. Your team just keeps getting better and better each season or each game. Um, what do you think of your team as it has progressed throughout the season to the point now it definitely started in the off season we did a lot of team bonding uh that, that was like our seniors idea because we knew that our junior year we kind of struggled early on and during two days was just the unity side of it like not everybody was understood that it takes a team to win football games so we we on tuesday nights we would have uh team bonding we go play like flash ball or go like play some basketball at the park or we'd uh go to somebody's house swim watch a movie just to get that close-knit group of guys you need to win football games and I think that's definitely what's most important about us is not a bunch of individuals out there we don't have a bunch of seniors that are playing because it's that's what everybody thinks we have a junior class sophomore class and freshman class that bought into understanding that the senior class wants to wants to win and I think that's definitely what's been uh, the best for this team well said yeah no uh, no as other class you know We've all come together and basically said that uh, we we need to get the seniors, you know, one last ride and one to remember. So, I mean, it all kind of plays into our team motto, too, you know, for each other. That, you know, everyone everyone's there not only for themselves, for their own class, but the whole team in general. So we all kind of just come together. Yeah, and, and you can tell it. I mean, us just watching you guys play, you guys play so well as a team. You know, everyone comes together. You know, we almost talked about it, too, like – your guys' team and community is almost like something you'd see like on a TV show or movie like Friday Night Lights. I mean, <laughs> you guys are just the the picture-perfect representation of that. I mean, in the small-town community of Liberty Center, just coming together as one. So that's just awesome to see. So uh, I'm going to pass it over. Any of the guys here, who wants to start? Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, hey, guys. Thanks for coming on. And hey. um, great game last week, and best of luck this week versus Elmwood. Uh question to both you guys you're both first team offense and defensive offensive defense alignment do you guys have a preference of like i guess what uh as far as blocking wise do you, do you prefer one or over the other uh not really because i mean on both sides i mean it's just like if 
you're not going to win on the D line if you're not completely dominant. You're not going to win on the offensive line. So I mean, just going out there, clashing heads with other guys, and showing that we're, we're the bigger guys and we we've, we've got the bigger manhood is just that's what that's what it is for me. I mean, absolutely. I mean, the fact that you know, personally, I mean, we're not going to back down. Like, there's nothing better than going up for a challenge and teams thinking that they're going to be able to come out and neutralize us, and then us go out there and just pound heads. So I mean, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Mm. <laughs> Spoken like a true lineman. <laughs> yeah. Is that it, Keith? No, go ahead. I got, oh. I got more, but I can talk all day to these oh, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, uh, I, I got a, a quick question for you. you. You guys, I was talking to a gentleman at work today, and, and um, you know, Logan mentioned it, just watching you guys play. We watched you guys play against Sonora um, beginning of the season, and I and, uh, thought you guys handled your business real well there. But, I mean, this past Friday night um, – didn't even compare to that, honestly. Um, but my question to you guys is: is what do you? What's your guys' work um, through the week that prepares you to? I mean, you guys honestly, to me, look like a college offensive line and defensive line, just especially offensive line. I mean, the way you guys were were help blocking and then bouncing to the next level. I mean, there was a couple times I saw you guys downfield, you know, laying safeties on their back, which was pretty awesome. But um, you know, what do you guys do to 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 do that? I mean, I don't. I just is it just pure desire uh n- no it's more of our coach nick miller he's kind of embedded in us that if we want to make sure our running backs are scoring and putting points on the board that we have to go out and just pound everybody i mean it, the game's won in the trenches and i mean if, you, if you're not winning a lot of scrimmage your your backs and skill play players have nowhere to go so it's definitely for us it's just we w- we want to dominate every game we're not going to let somebody get in our way and it's it's definitely helped with Nick Miller in the off season and stuff. He's just even in the weight room. That's where he really embedded it, Make it making us work as hard as we can, so it, it translates out there. Because if I'm pushing myself as hard as I can in the weight room, I'm going to push myself as hard as I can out in the football field. Yeah, I tell you, what, I actually had the pleasure of meeting uh, Coach Miller at the Henry County Fair. I sat there beside him, and we got talking football and um, found out he was he coached you guys. So we had a, we had a pretty good talk the, through the season. So it's good to know that he's. Uh, he's a big guy himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had one question for you guys here. One thing that really impressed us from the defensive side of things was the uh, your ability to chase down the whether there's running back or receiver afterwards. I know oh, and there was one specific uh, play we saw you. I think it was a screen pass. Uh, you you blew through the line of scrimmage and yet you still chased down the receiver that had caught the screen pass. And I know both of you guys are kind of doing that all season. Uh, we're, talking about some of the plays you guys had made throughout their podcast. What goes through your mind as that play is developing? What makes you think I need to turn around and go get the receiver? Uh, well, half the point is, is we're not supposed to be going through the line of the screen pass and we're trying to save our butts. So we don't get yelled at. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's, that's for another work. I mean, we're big guys, but we're, again, we're not oversized. I mean, we're pretty, pretty athletic for some big guys and, definitely like our conditioning and knowing that if we got to hustle the ball and make sure they're not getting yards downfield. So if we, if we can stop it and make sure they're not gaining yards, I mean, that's what we're going to do. I mean, that benefits the entire team. And if we don't get there, we know we've got some great guys, great linebackers, great DBs coming up to fill. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. You guys were very disciplined on the offensive side of the ball. I was, um, you know, as far as blocking your blocking schemes and that kind of stuff, it just, it was, it was really impressive to see how, how you guys kind of worked as a unit. You were pulling, um, running that trap. <laughs> I mean, um, you guys were just blowing people up. Yeah, I mean, we don't get a chance to pull very often, so when we do, we're going to make it count. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you one thing. I don't know if I'm going to want to be that defender on, on the other side uh, when you guys are coming around pulling on a block, so that, that's for sure. Uh, Keith, you got any more? Yeah, I have a couple more, actually. Um, guys, Pretty well, if it's like a state-of-the-art locker room over there. I mean, you have everything first class. Um, um, what's it like to work out over there? Uh, I mean, it's nice and all. I mean, it really doesn't change. I mean, for us, it's, it's a weight room. It, it may be nice and stuff, but, I mean, it, you can put me in a whole wall gym, and I'm still going to get the, the same workout <laughs> I do there. I just, awesome. The, the nicer facility just makes it nicer to look at while we're down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that thing's awesome. Yeah. Um, you're not you're not going to see a different. We're still going to be down there throwing weights around and grunting. I mean, just the nice equipment just makes it a lot easier. Yeah, that's a very very valid point. Uh, 
last one for me, I'll rewind back to last year. Um, you guys battled Archibald in the regional semifinal, uh, trotted out uh, Carly Roth after uh, Wes Weimer was lost for the season halfway through the year. Uh, when that ball went through the uprights, what, like, I guess, what sort of excitement or, or what did you guys feel when, when that happened? I mean, it's like, obviously, it's something you don't see all the time is like, uh, you know, a, a female field goal kicker comes out there, let alone in a, a, a game against a rival. And then she comes out there for uh, probably the most important kick in, of the season. Yeah. Um, before the play even happened, we were on the sideline. I mean, the game was tied up. And I told her before before she went out there and kicked, I was like, Carly, if, if you make this, you don't make it. You're still going to be a Tiger. Like, we have your back. Don't worry about it. It's just a, it's a normal kick the way it is. And she shook her head, and then I was out there, and we stepped down. They didn't come very hard, and then I look up, and I watch it go through, and it, it was unbelievable to that, see that the hard work ever since since we got beat 41-7 to earlier that season, and everybody wasn't very happy about it. The hard work that everybody put in to make sure that never happened again and to make sure we got that win was – it paid off. Like I could tell that it was just like a weight taken off the shoulders after getting embarrassed like we did earlier in the season. Yeah. Well, hey, good luck to you guys this week, man. I tell you what, um, it, it was very impressive to watch you guys play, and I, I, I think the uh, sky's the limit for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, last question I got for you guys is, uh, what does this Friday's game against Elmwood look like, and what is it going to take to beat a great Elmwood team? Uh, I get this question a lot. This is a question every week that some people in the school ask. I mean, for, for me personally, it's, it's a game like every other week. I mean, it, it doesn't matter that it's a regional final game. I mean, I'm just going to go out there and play football. I mean, that's what it's all about is just playing playing your game. I mean, we're not going to deviate. We're going to do what we do best and just go out and run right at them. Good. Sounds, yeah, sounds like, like a Owen said, Oh, go ahead. Uh, like Owen said, you know, it's just another game. I mean, there's not really any – like higher stakes or anything. I mean, it's playoffs. It's, it's do or die. And you know, ever since August, every week we've taken us. We're we're practicing to beat the best team in the state, no matter what. So it just comes natural to us, I guess. Yeah, something. I, I'm a coach myself, guys, and I, I always tell you know I coach high school softball and I, I coach junior high football. But um, you know, as we move through the Sonora, did a pretty good job last year in the tournament for softball, and I try to tell the kids nothing changes between the white lines. Right, so it doesn't matter how big the crowd gets or what stadium you're playing in or none of that stuff. But once once you're inside the white lines and on the field, nothing changes. So go out to, go out there and kick butt. Yeah, and I, I like your guys' mentality too. Is don't overcomplicate things, and I mean keep doing what you guys are doing because uh, obviously it's working. So yeah. um, I think that's the last question we have for you. But we all wish you good luck. Uh, I believe uh, a majority of us will be at the game and uh, we'll be rooting you guys on and and watching guys kick some butt this uh, this coming weekend. All right, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Good luck. Thank you. No problem. Bye. Bye. Those guys were great, dude. (laughs) (laughs) That That was awesome. Some of their answers were, I mean, that's like, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, definitely. And um, and both of them, I mean, (laughs) you you could definitely tell that there were some linemen because of the the responses (laughs) to the question. But uh, two great kids in Owen Box and Lena Bachelman. So glad we were able to have them on. And and what a season that they're having and their team is having. So uh, it was great to uh, give them a little bit of fame here and uh, and, and pick their brains a little bit. So Yeah, and some of the responses they gave really show the culture that Coach Moeller over there it does uh, breeds yeah. so yep. it's awesome to see that not only in in the way he talks about football but the way they talk about football as well yeah and they mentioned coach miller and uh aj had a booth set up over there and at the henry county fair uh during the summer there and sat down and uh the guys next to me was here i just kind of just started small talk and i was bored right so i was talking to the guys next to me and um he mentioned that he was from from uh, Liberty Center, and I'm like, oh yeah, these start talking about something about football, and I'm like, okay, well, hang on a second. Got, <laughs> so as soon as he said something about football, we got we kind of started talking, and uh, he's a great guy, very friendly, very easy to talk to. We got talking some football, and and um, I thought, well, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. You know, tomorrow's gonna be playing you guys, and um, but man, uh, he he's a big dude himself. He's he's pretty big. So it's, uh, when I found out, you know, they said he's the offensive line coach. I'm like, yeah, I kind of figured that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, them guys over there just like the for the last decade after decade have offensive defense alignment and demo lines last year owen johnson player of the year now uh, this year then um 
you know, Landon is just a junior, I think. Yeah, so, yeah. And then you have Seth Navarre, too, <laughs> right. as another really good lineman, too, it's, for him. Yeah. So it's like they keep yeah. re- reproducing uh, guys in the trenches. Yeah. You know, guys, the, the one thing that they said that I think is absolutely huge for their success is, was that – you know, team bonding time that they took Absolutely. during the summer. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and, 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 and Bauckham and saying that, you know, they're playing for the seniors. They want them all to be successful. Um, I mean, that just speaks volumes to where their success is coming from, honestly. Yeah. I mean, and, and like you said too, I mean, there's a reason why they're winning and they're playing the way they are. And I, I believe it's that everyone's bought into that program and, and bought in uh, for the team and not for, for their individual selves. And that's something you can really see on and off the field. Yeah. You've had two head coaches in 40 years. So, you know, <laughs> the groundwork is there. The foundation is built. You've added on and everything's just, here's the way we do things. It's not difficult. It's just, just follow the footsteps of everybody in front of you and do what they did. Yeah, and they so haven't really, really it. haven't really changed a lot. No, no. You know, they have results. such a rich tradition yeah. there. Liberty Center's football is Liberty Center football. has been yep. Liberty Center football, yep. you know what I mean? So um, you're right, Keith. It's just kind of a building a tradition. All right. We'll move on to the playoffs round four. In other words, the regional final game predictions. So we've only got four games once again this week. So all the teams we covered last week won, which is excellent to see. So we'll go ahead and we'll kick it off here. It's going to be Liberty Center against Elmwood. Liberty Center is 13-0. Elmwood is 12-1. and um, We, we kind of discussed it previously, so I don't believe there's, there's much to discuss here. But I think uh, Liberty Center is going to win this one. I think they'll win by a couple scores. Uh, pure dominance, pure physicality we've seen from Liberty Center the last couple of weeks. I think they continue that this week. And though Elmwood's definitely got uh, – a lot of skilled players and a lot of threats on the offensive side of the ball. They've got a good defensive line too, but I think Liberty Center is just going to be too much for this them this week. So I'm going the Tigers in this one. Yeah, I agree with everything you said. Yeah, I think the Tigers just kind of uh, force their hand in just about every way possible: offensive line, defensive line, running backs. You know, the triple threat there with uh, Cruz and and even with even with Zider running the ball. That that's pretty huge to have that third third uh, threat there so i'm going with liberty center by big oh well, tigers for me and bryce said <laughs> yeah bryce is going liberty center too so liberty center across the board next game van wert 12 and 1 against glenville 12 and 0 um and we discussed this one um i think it's going to take a lot a lot of luck for van wert to pull this one out i know we'd like to see the cougars win but glenville's just got too much talent you know 11 division one players on their their roster they've got a couple top four-star recruits um glenville has blown out everyone this year um i'm going glenville i think they win big in this one unfortunately yeah glenville all the way yep glenville here yeah i'm with glenn I'm, I'm with logan there glenville's just to think Van Wert's going to kind of run into the wall here. And Bryce had Glenville as well, so Glenville across the board. Uh, next game is going to be Antwerp 13-0 and against Liberty S- or Lima Central Catholic, I'm <laughs> sorry, 9-4. and And this is going to be our NWO Sports Game of the Week. Um, this one will be Donnell, and we'll be, uh, some of us will be attending that one. So uh, I, think, I think as long as Carson Ultimus is healthy, um, and everyone else on the team is, and uh, they can stop Carson Paul Parker from uh, Lima Central Catholic. I think Antwerp's going to pull out a win in this one, so um, I, I'm taking the Archers. Yeah, I, I waited to the last second to pick this one. Taking <laughs> it, staying in the conference, taking the Archers, but I mean, obviously, Lima Central Catholic's running game is not as potent as, as last week, uh, what Gibsonburg was, but just, yeah, the. It should be a really good game. I think it'll be closer than people think. I think so, so too. Um, again, with the weather, you can say you try and throw a football when it's 20 degrees outside. Um, Ball's a little bit harder. It's a little which, bit harder which I, to, to I throw was impressed and catch. with Antwerp last week because the temperatures were yeah, pretty cold yeah, yeah. And, yep. and that didn't seem to affect them at all. So I was, I was pretty impressed in, on that sense mm-hmm. of things. Yeah, with, uh, I, you know, when we saw LCC play earlier in the season, I was not impressed at all. Obviously, that was pretty early, so things have changed. I have no idea what they look like now because they're outside of our coverage area. Um, but Antwerp continues to show us that they're they're what they're made of, and I think uh, Antwerp takes this one. Antwerp for me. And Bryce had Antwerp as well. So Antwerp from all of us here. Uh, last game, Columbus Grove, 11-2 and against Columbia, 13-0. and uh, Like I said, too, I like the way uh, quarterback for Columbus Grove, Brenton Renner's playing. Um, I know, we obviously know they have a good rushing attack, but I think it's going to rely a lot on him. And they're really good defense. You saw last game. It was a low-scoring game. But uh, I'm going the Bulldogs in this one and Coach Schaefer. And uh, 
I, I think they're going to pull this one out. I got to catch up on AJ somehow. So I, took, I, took <laughs> I was waiting Columbia. for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, Columbus Grove here, they, they're they battle-tested. I don't think Columbia is as battle-tested. I know their record's a little better, but I don't think at this point in the season that really matters at all. So uh, I'm going with Columbus Grove. And I went with Columbia. I still struggling with that one, but after I went through all those uh, losses, wins, and against those, I mean, subpar teams, but um, I think, um, unfortunately, Columbus Grove's season comes to an end. And Bryce had Columbus Grove as well. So that concludes our uh, game predictions. So what are you guys' the closing thoughts going into the regional final week? Bundle up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take the take the hand warmer, stuff it, uh, stuff it when it hurts or whatnot, and get the get the eighteen pack. There you <laughs> go. Don't don't use the nineteen sixty ones that no, I brought to the no, game. Yeah, okay. those those don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be great next week if we if we come back here and you got Liberty Center and Antwerp still playing and Columbus Grove and Van Wert. What if we could get half of those teams? I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, Northwest Ohio sports is covering covering the teams that are in the playoffs here and then, you know, in the regional finals and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. But we talked about, you know, get out and watch a ball game this week. If you haven't been out yet and you want, this is the week you decide now you're gonna have to bundle up a little bit. You've wasted all the good looking <laughs> weeks. Um, but you know, it's an exciting time of the year. It's, you know, it's coming into the holiday season with Thanksgiving and, you know, only the best of the state played next weekend. And, um, so it, it's just getting to that exciting time. And I, I, I just hope, uh, you know, Northwest Ohio can keep it, keep it rolling. Yeah, crowd, crowds get bigger. And as we saw last week, kids from, as we mentioned, kids from everywhere, from all over the area, they show up. And varsity jackets from schools all around GMC and, and, yeah. and whatnot. So and It's fantastic that Antwerp and Liberty Center play on opposite nights. Like yeah. we, like we yep. said earlier, Liberty Center was at Antwerp's game. Um, I really doubt if Antwerp will be at Liberty Center's game on Friday night. Right. But um, still, that that would be awesome. That's awesome to see that kind of support. And, um, you know, it's uh gives fans like you know even gives us an opportunity we can go catch both games being friday night and saturday night so yeah it's kind of nice not kind of nice yeah and i i just wanted to say too i mean you touched on it too uh tony is just the support from from other schools other fans um it's just awesome to see a close-knit community like northwest ohio go out and and provide some support so i think that's awesome to see i don't think you necessarily see that in other areas of the state or even other states too so that's just something that i think is really cool that that a lot of our uh, people in our community. It's, it's, do. it's funny you say that, Logan, because Brandy Moss has that you got Moss segments, and he had highlights the last couple of weeks of schools that are in their semifinals and whatever. And you look in the stands, and you're thinking, it's like a state semifinal game, and <laughs> they're like half full. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah. you come to Northwest Ohio, and, you know, basically from the opening round on, like they're, both sides are jammed. So, yeah. yeah. And like we said, too, I mean, we were at that Liberty Center, and I, I was at Liberty Center. Well, some of us were we were all at Liberty Center and uh, Coldwater, and me and my brother were at the the Antwerp and Gibsonburg game. But both of those games were pretty packed. So uh, again, it's just awesome to see see the community um, support for those programs. But uh, yeah, like AJ said, bundle up because it's going to be a cold one. And uh, something else too, I want to bring up. It's always cool and an honor if if you can win this week and make it to Thanksgiving and have Thanksgiving as a team. That's something cool. I'll mm-hmm. never forget. I was able to achieve that twice yep. in, in high school, and that's just something not many teams get to do. And, and you know, when you're playing to Thanksgiving, there's only four teams left in the state in your division. So that's something that's that's to yeah. be pretty proud of. Yep. And yeah, when, absolutely. when you see, like, the, uh, the, the teams – pushing back their basketball schedule also. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, well, know. you know you're having a successful football season. I know it was awesome. And you guys were making your run to, to be out there. We, we went and had Thanksgiving. And then, you know, on, yeah. on Saturday, yep. we, we watched the Buckeye-Michigan game and yep. then took off to the took off down to, to the line to watch you guys play or Wapakoneta, I think it was, yeah. the one time. So, um, but, yeah, it's, it's a good time of year. All right. Well, that will conclude the podcast. Um, again, go out there and support those local teams. Um, we would just like to give thanks to all of our sponsors, Three Chord, Bat and Stevens Body Shop, Tenor Rams Live, Jimenez Basketball Academy, Fairchild Family Chiropractic, NWO Basketball, Crystal Vasquez of Ameramade Realty, and new sponsor, LC Tiger Sports Live. So glad to have them on board. Um, we also like to give a special thanks to Jeff Bat for allowing us to use his amazing use facility here at Bat and Stevens Body Shop for today's podcast. Stay tuned for the next NWO Sports Podcast in the near future, and thanks for watching.